Brandon Soriano here in the back room of Norman's Rare Guitars for an all new episode of Guitar of the Day. Woo! It's the second to last episode of 2022. Uh, we are not in the shop this week. We take a week off between Christmas Day and New Year's every year, but we're pre-filming all of these episodes for you at home so that you can keep enjoying some guitar content. Yes. Um, we are really excited for 2023. We, we're going to be back in the shop on Tuesday, January 3rd, and uh, some big things planned for this year. We're you know really excited to get back into the swing of things and uh, to hear from all of you, um, to see some cool new guitars, and uh, keep doing these videos and we have some other things kind of in the pipeline. So uh, it's going to be a big year. And to all of you watching at home, thank you sincerely for sticking with us for so many years. Um, Jen has worked her butt off for... 13 like, years. Oh my God. I've been here 13 years. years, yeah. Big round of applause for Jen in the Why, comments. thank Go you. Go ahead and drop a comment down there for Jen. <laughs> um, yeah, we're really excited for another year. Uh, and we couldn't be doing this without the support from all of you. So yes. sincere thank you. Um, today's Flat Top Friday. The last Flat Top Friday. The last Flat Top Friday of 2022. Woo! And so I had to pull out something really cool. This is one of my favorite acoustics in the shop. And it's rad. It did not have the original case. So in a reissue hard shell case from the early 1930s. Yes, the 1930s. This is a Gibson L00. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I kind of like that. Oh, I love it, man. Want to buy it for me? Uh, you want to buy it for me? <laughs> Norm! <laughs> Jen and I are taking dual custody. Um, this is a, a sweet guitar. This one is a little bit player grade. Uh, right off the bat, this pit guard has been changed from a straight white to a crushed pearl white, which I actually really dig. I think that looks super cool. And then it's had a couple of uh, separation repairs kind of around it. You know, all over. It's, it's a bit of a player grade guitar, but it's cool because, uh, first of all, it's black, and a lot of these you see in Sunburst. Um, the L00 was released in 1931 and was a bit of an answer to Martin's like double O, single O sized guitars. Um, and as I understand it, a lot of the early ones, the really early ones, were black, but then they transitioned into most of them being Sunburst. And another interesting factor is that this is a 12 fret guitar, which means the body meets the fingerboard at the 12 fret. Most of the ones that I've seen have been 14 fret guitars um, so that's just a cool kind of feature on this the 12 fret definitely gives it its own sound a lot of early acoustics were 12 fret guitars like all those Martin slot heads that you see and everything like that I love that the truss rod cover matches the pit guard I think if you're gonna change one uh, makes sense to change both and to have a match and that really does it for me on the back here this guitar once belonged to Friedman's Guitar Shop, which was located in New Jersey. So Friedman's Guitar Shop in New Jersey made its way all the way out here to Los Angeles. Um, yeah. Cool. <laughs> this is a, <laughs> open geared tuners on the back. Um, really just like a straightforward little guitar. Uh, the the mid-range on these little Gibson acoustics is what I live for. I think that they record really well because they just have so much character to them. Um, it's really a distinct sound, like all of that mid-range punch, uh, and it cuts through a mix really well because of that. If you have an acoustic that's a little too low-end and high-endy, um, it might fail to fill in some of that mid-range. This cuts right through in the mid-range. So if you're using this in the context of a recording or like with a vocalist maybe, depending on their vocal range or in a band or whatever, it could cut through really, really well. And um, it's, I wouldn't call it a cheap guitar, but because it's a player grade instrument, it's a lot less than it would be if it was 100% straight. Um, I sold one of these here at the shop about a year ago that was black 12 fret, but it was 100% straight and it was like nearly twice the price. So these things can get up there. This one is certainly one for a player and I think whoever gets it would be just really, really happy with it. Um, so that being said, Let's hear what the mid-range can do. We're gonna keep it back here today. And um, I'm gonna do some, some like finger style stuff, some chordal stuff, you know, things that I think would uh, work well for a guitar like this. So let's jump right in. There's an old Bobby Gentry tune called Ode to Billy Joe. Um, there's an accompanying movie as well, but I learned about this song from my girlfriend, Hannah, who loves to sing it a lot. And so it's a fun guitar part and little guitars work well for it. So here we go. <laughs>
over to a fingerstyle picking thing. That was nice. Yeah, this is a great guitar. I love these little things for recording. I think they sit under a mic so well. Um, let's do some picking stuff. I'll play a little The Who for you. guitar um let's do one more have time for one more sure cool i'm feeling it um i had one in mind and i'm sure there we go this is what i wanted to do uh one more finger style thing to leave you with Awesome. 
there you have it. A wonderful <laughs> little guitar. That sounds amazing. Oh, I really, really love this thing. Uh, this is the early 1930s 12 fret Gibson L00. You can find this right here at Norman's Rare Guitars. We're on Reverb, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, check us out. Thank you for your continued support. And we'll see you in the new year after tomorrow's Stratter Day. Uh, <laughs> thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Peace. Bye. That sounded great. I wow. love this thing, man. This is really cool.